You're going to explain why this year is a little bit different than every other year we've heard his name. So why is it? Yeah, it's different in this regard. And Dan Duquette, in speaking with other teams, has indicated to them, look, we are listening on Manny Machado, uh, and uh, he indicated to other teams that Peter Angelos approved those conversations, in other words, allowed him to go forward. Now, the Orioles are known as one of baseball's ultimate flirts. They get into these <laughs> conversations, and at the end, they pull back. Uh, because Peter Angelos is a very competitive person. He's never executed and <clears throat> approved a sell-off in his entire time as an Orioles owner. But Tex is exactly right. When you look at the Orioles, especially against the landscape of the Yankees and the Red Sox and where they are, and I think this is true for the Jays and for the Tampa Bay Rays as well, you know what? You're better off positioning yourself for the future. That's why I think they're having these conversations. I still have doubt whether even if they get a really good offer from a team like the St. Louis Cardinals who, who might be interested, like the Chicago Cubs, whether or not the Orioles actually would follow through and trade Machado rather than wait until he walks away as a free agent next fall. And in Manny's perfect world, he wants to play shortstop, right? He doesn't want to play third base. Well, he wants to play shortstop for the Orioles. They're actually looking for a shortstop, uh, and that, so there's the vacancies there. My guess is is that if he had an opportunity to go to a team uh, like the Cubs, like the Cardinals, that he'd be willing to play third base. And let's uh, let's make this very clear: if the Orioles actually want to make their best possible trade, you know who they should call? The Yankees, who need a third baseman right now. They certainly would have the prospects to deal, but I don't <laughs> think Peter Angelos would ever make a deal with the Yankees.